Guys, what's going on, man? Welcome back to another ESL podcast or another video if you guys are watching this on Facebook or YouTube. Again, um, not many people watch me on YouTube, but nonetheless, today is another TOEFL ITP reading. I know a lot of you out there have been viewing this, especially the likes of the Peel family. I remember one of my blogs went up like 150 views in just like less than an hour. Big shout out to my Indonesians as usual. And so what I wanted to do was another one, but the difference between what I've done before, such as the Peel family and you know Life on Mars and a couple of other ones, um, one that just debuted on the podcast uh, in regards to the susceptibility of colds, is that's more of what you're definitely going to find on the test. So, and this is more of an easier version. So that's why I put intermediate because Longman is very easy, okay? Now, this is what's really, really important because I've taken the TOEFL ITP test a number of times this year. And I know that the new series that have just come out, those reading texts are no joke. They are extremely difficult. So to even match this up to something like that is like pre-intermediate versus native, okay? So just giving you guys a nice little insight. If you guys believe that the text I put out so thus far is very, very difficult, well, you can always go to the intermediate. Now, again, if you guys want this more in bulk and you don't want to wait, remember, TOEFL ITP badge is available on my Patreon. You sign up with that, again, from this year, okay? It's only going to be like this for the next what, 18, 19 more days. After that, the price will increase. So keep that in mind. But nonetheless, you get two coaching hours with that. You get templates, you get videos, you get Q&As, you get webinars, you get everything in those specific badges. So I want you guys to keep that in mind, okay? And with that being said, let's get into this intermediate reading, again, from a long bin text, a little bit easier, but I just want to outline some things. We're going to take this slow, all right? So this one is about Mr. John James Adubon, okay, which is very, very difficult name to pronounce having a D and a B in it. But nonetheless, so what I want to point out very quickly is I was doing some TOEFL IBT reading. Okay, so obviously ITP, IBT, a little bit different, same concept. But in IBT, the questions are far crazier, right? But the summary questions can be a little bit of a problem. So what I did, she kept asking me, she said, you know what, what do I do? Do I do this first before I do this? Do I do this before I do this? And I said, listen, what you need to do is go straight to the questions. Do not waste your time reading anything because by the time you get to the questions, you're already, what you will have forgotten what you read, okay? So keep that in mind. So we go straight into the questions. You wanna bang out your vocabulary questions? If you don't know the vocabulary, forget about it, all right? Just make a quick guess, 10 to 15 seconds, pass, all right? The longer questions, such as according to the passage, the passage mainly discusses the primary focus of this, you're going to have to do the supporting detailed questions first before you get into the main thing of the passage. Now, yes, looking at the first sentence of the first paragraph of the passage, you will get a very good idea of what is going to be talked about. But at the same time, you gotta understand what the differences are between specific details and the general idea. That's critical. Once you understand that, you will never miss the summary question, period. All right, so like I said, number one, it says the map, this passage is mainly about, we're not gonna do that right now, okay? Let's get into the vocabulary. So huh, number two, it says the word foremost. Now you guys probably have seen that. Um, you guys probably have seen that in some of my paragraphs that I've written, the descriptions in my podcast. First and foremost, right? So it's the first thing that I want to point out. So it's kind of like saying first and first. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of like, I don't know if it's colloquial. I don't know if it's a little 1990s, 1980s American English. It's a very, very bad uh, habit. I wouldn't say it's a bad habit. I think people still write that. But again, you don't have to say first and foremost. You could just say firstly or first, okay? Followed by a comma, uh, a comma not a comma. So in saying that, number two, we already know what the answer is. So we got A, prior, or bullet point number two, leading, C, first, 
the largest. Ta-da! Now, again, in line one, I shouldn't have written line one, but nonetheless, it says here, John James Audubon, 19th century artist and naturalist, is known as one of the foremost authorities of northern, is it northern? Okay, northern American birds, which I don't know what the hell that means, but I'm guessing he's one of the very first people who have, you know, ended up doing something with North American birds. But nonetheless, it says, is known as one of the foremost authorities. So again, the synonym for foremost is first. So is known as one of the first authorities on North American birds. You guys get what I'm saying? This is how you can break things down. If you don't know what foremost means, get your little TOEFL book out, write down the vocabulary, hey, and it's all about practicing it, right? So, huh, going into the second paragraph. Now this is a little bit, uh, it's a little crazier, right? But it says in the second paragraph, the author mainly discusses so this is going to help support that overall number one, like the passage is mainly about, but in the second paragraph, it's more specific, right? So I'm not gonna read out the answers. What I'm gonna do is go to the second paragraph and read that first sentence and it says, in his young adulthood, he undertook enterprises, okay? Not much success. Various times of his life, business, lumber, gristmill, taxidermy business, and school. His general mode of operating the business was to leave it with blah, 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 a partner, okay, his business career. So basically, this is about the beginning of his adulthood and the businesses that he had ended up, uh, what's the word he used? Uptaken? Uh, uh, undertook, uh, there we go, undertaken, which is weird. Uptaken? Undertaken? Who cares? All right, so again, I'll give you guys this. In A, it says how Audubon developed his painting style. Nothing in the second paragraph indicates that it, that paragraph was about that. B, Audubon's involvement in mercantile business. C, where Audubon went on his excursions. D, Audubon's unsuccessful business practices. So we're able to drop A, we're able to drop which one? C. So we have B and D. Involvement in a mercantile business. Is that a very specific, specific detail? Or D, Audubon's unsuccessful business practices. What is more generally about? Type your answer down there in the comment section. Now, let's go into number four. The word mode in line seven could best be replaced by, now, again, you would hear people say, uh, mode of transportation. So here we go. And you heard me just recently say it. It's the second sentence of the second paragraph. And it says, his general mode of operating a business was to leave it either unattended or in the hands of another person. So his general way of handling or operating a business, okay, let's look here. The words are method A, B, vogue, C, average, D, trend. I want you guys to put your answer in the comment section. And for everyone else who's listening to me in my ESL podcast, know that the badge is available, yes. And of course, my Instagram, the Arsenio Buck Perspective. Get on over there, follow me in. Again, comment and tell me, okay, well, what do you think, which is which? All right, now going into number five. Audubon decided not to continue to pursue business when, okay, so we're looking for the not to continue to, again, pursue business. So if we look here, ah, last sentence, we're looking for the negative in regards to his business. We could scan through very quickly and find it. Um, but right after I told you about the excursions through the wilds to paint the natural life that he saw, this next sentence is your answer. His business career came to an end in 1819 when he was jailed for debt and forced to file for bankruptcy. So again, going back to the question, he decided not to continue to pursue business when he was injured in an accident at a grist mill. You didn't hear me say that. B, he decided to study art in France. Absolutely didn't hear me say that. He was put in prison because he owed money, perhaps. He made enough money from his paintings, perhaps. Let's look at the first sentence of the last paragraph. It was that time that Audubon began to seriously pursue the dream of publishing a collection of paintings of birds. 
That's it, okay? We're looking for why did he stop business? It came to an end because he was jailed. Answer, what? I already gave you the answer. So let's do it. Let's keep it going. Pursue. What does pursue mean? Okay? Like you want to pursue your dreams, pursue your passion. Does that mean imagine, share, follow, or deny? It's the same meaning in the text too. Now going into number seven. According to the passage, Audubon's paintings were realistic. Oh, I'm not going to say the answers yet. Let's go back. According to the passage, his paintings, what were they about? For the next six years, he painted birds in their natural habitats while his wife worked as a teacher to support his family. His Birds of America, which included engravings of 435 of his colorful and lifelike watercolors, was published in parts during the blah, 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 blah. We're talking about his paintings. So what did he do with the paintings? The paintings, the paintings, the paintings. Okay, so again, in the second paragraph, it says, he would go off on excursions through the wilds to paint the natural light that he saw. In the third paragraph, it says for the next six years, he painted birds in their natural habitats. So what were his paintings about? Were realistic portrayals used only black, white, and gray? Were done in oils or depicted birds in cages? This is how you break it down, people. You see how fast I found that. And this is the first time I read it too. I wrote it all out, although I possibly could have read it while I was reading, you know, writing it all out. But this is what you want to do, okay? Get out some of those sentences, compare the information process of elimination, boom, you will make the right decision. And I know some of them are very hard. I know, I know I got some of my folks out there from Sao Paulo, Brazil. You guys have been telling me, man, man, the goddamn reading is no joke. Oh, believe me, I took the test like 30 times this year because these people kept wanting me to take it. But hey, I got a lot of practice and I understand a hell of a lot more than before the first time. So, A, this one's easy. The word support in line 13 could best be replaced by tolerate, provide for, side with, or fight for. Now, okay, fine. I'll go up to the line 13. All right, let's go look at this support. Where is support? And of course, it's not in line 13 because in line 13 is where the text was. So what we have to, there it is. Okay, and it's in the same sentence I just said. For the next six years, he painted birds in the natural habitats while his wife worked as a teacher to support the family, to provide for the family, to provide for the family. B is your answer. I just gave you the answer to the vocabulary. To support means to provide for or perhaps to, to back. Huh? All right, write it down. If you don't know, get your little TOEFL ITP vocabulary booklet out. Jot it down, people. It doesn't hurt. Number nine, it can be inferred from the passage that after 1839, Audubon, okay, after, okay, after the passage. So what we have to do is look at the last sentence. After the success of the English editions, American editions of his work were published in 1839, and his fame and fortune were insured. His fame and fortune were insured, meaning solidified, meaning checkmark. So, A, it says unsuccessfully tried to develop new businesses, doesn't say it. Continued to be supported by his wife, absolutely didn't say it. Traveled to Europe, absolutely didn't say it. Became wealthy, correct. Why? Because in what I just said, it said his fame and fortune were insured, meaning, boom, that's when he became wealthy. That's when he became a goddamn success. So with that being said, guys, man, I hope you enjoyed this wonderful ESL podcast or video. I just want you guys to get an idea of how I break each individual question down, okay? I'm going to try to put more coaching stuff up there. Again, TOEFL ITP with the reading. Guys, I submit like two different readings a week, vocabulary, like grammar, uh, written expression, lots of great templates, lots of great communications, two free coaching hours. You name it, man. It's all on there. So again, if you're interested in that, reach out to me. If you're interested in coaching in general through some of this, that's also available too. Remember, price hikes begin January 1st of 2021. So if you are interested in prices for this year, $30 per hour, increasing 33% beginning January 1st, get your coaching hours in right now so it could help solidify for the next X amount of days or months. So that being said, I'll be uh, sharing more stuff. ITP listening. That's right. Part three, we're going to be talking about railroads. 
coming up real soon. If you don't want to wait for the podcast, it's available on early access where you get the template and everything else, of course, on my TOEFL ITP badge. So stay tuned for more over and out.